Justin. Justin, dude, we just have to do this. It's it's been almost a week. We just have to have to pull it off. We, you know, we just have to sit down and talk about this. No! Go away, James. I told you I'm not doing this. Come on, dude. Come on. Listen, I know. Listen, I live in Southwest Ohio. Trust me, I am the first person who doesn't want to do this. But man, we just got it. We got to put it together. Oh my God! Shut up, Jake. Jake, I hate you. Stop it. I'm not doing this. Oh, geez. Well, I guess I will be uh, hosting the show. Uh, and oh, there he is. There he is. He's finally uh, came out of the the hole of uh, depression. And hello, darkness, my old friend, Justin. Jake, uh, welcome look. to the video. First, Jake, I'm sorry. Okay, I said a lot of stuff back there. I don't hate you. I'm just this game, Jake. I'm 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 not taking this well. Um, I've been on a seven day bender and dude, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope you can forgive me. I mean, I, I don't hate you. I, I admire you more than anything for wanting to get on the show, do your job and talk about this, this devastating, devastating loss. Um, this sucks, Jake. I, I gotta admit, this is going to be a long video. Let me, let me turn down an, an ad that popped up on my laptop. Um, I, I don't know, Jake, we're going to be, I'm going to be everywhere uh, in this video. There's there's going to be no structure. I'm going to be very salty and complainy. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Jake, uh, uh, take it away. I'm, I'm already starting to lose steam. I'm I got you. Myself here. Fair enough. And hey, cheers to that, man. So this game was heartbreaking on so many different levels that I, I can't even begin to describe one, how badly I wanted the Titans to win this football game. And two, how devastated I was at Ryan Tannehill's third interception of the game. The first two, whatever. Ryan Tannehill throws those. We are coming to grips as Titans fans that Ryan Tannehill I'm just Tannehill's interceptions, man. Isn't I'm, the guy. Is, oh my God. <laughs> Ryan Tannehill just isn't the guy that's going to take the Titans to the promised land. And, you know, yeah. we'll start peeling back the layers of the onion a little bit. It's going to get stinkier and stinkier and saltier and saltier as we go, Justin. Yeah. But uh, wow, did the Titans really uh, blow it uh, last Saturday against the Cincinnati Bengals by a score of 19 to 16, Justin. The Titans fall as a franchise to 0 and 3 when carrying the number one seed in the conference. Uh, sheesh, man. I, I just. It's, I've, as I've Titans fans, through, where do we go? I've lived through three of these, dude. I, I can't believe that we can't get a W at home after a bye week for three times now in, in Titans history. Uh, man, I mean, you said it. I think there's there's so much talk about Tannehill. Tannehill is going to be the topic of conversation. And, dude, I'm – it's time. I'm, I'm with you. I, I can't believe it. I'm saying this. But we saw what happened last year in the playoffs. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Dude, he's not gotten it done in the, in the postseason when it matters most. And – I mean, yes, he's he's been very solid, very good. Had a, had some games, a handful of games where he had turnover issues, and we would lose those games. And boom, it popped up again here in the playoffs. Uh, but in, but overall, he's been a good quarterback in the regular season. But what do we have to show for it, Jake? We have two AFC South titles, which is nice. I mean, I'm not trying to you know sweep that under the rug or anything because this franchise has seen some dark dark seasons. Uh, so two straight division titles is is something to be proud of, but. Outside of that, what do we have to show for this season, Jake? Uh, this is all I'm going to remember now for the 2021 season. Like, we we swept the Colts. Yay. Hooray. I can't even enjoy that, Jake. I should be parting hard for sweeping the Indianapolis Colts this season uh, just because of this, this playoff performance, Jake. And it stings that much worse because of how great the defense was. Dude, it's the same blueprint in all of these first-seeded Titans teams in the playoffs dominating defense for defensive performance but on the other side the offensive ineptitude not being able to take care of the football becomes our undoing nine i almost have don't have enough fingers to show you how many sacks we got in this game jake nine sacks we were destroying their offensive line we were dominating the line of scrimmage on that side of the ball um i mean prop, props to joe burrow man he's he's his, he held up his poise, and I, you know, you got to give credit to the Bengals. They came in here and played a good, solid game and forced the Tannehill mistakes, which were the were the undoing. Uh, dude, first play of the game, an interception? What? 
what? We can't be doing that in the playoffs. I, I don't know. I don't know, Jake. I don't know if, if Tannehill didn't see him or if he's just forcing the read there. And you, you got to, you know, uh, you got to be better, dude. You got to be better. Uh, I get it. I get it, Justin. I, I get okay. it. And with, okay, Ryan Tannehill, I have kind of two schools of thought for Ryan Tannehill. And you have to, uh, it's all about perspective as a football fan in this juncture, Justin. When, when football fans suffer heartbreaking losses, it's about perspective. You have to think about where this Titans team was when Ryan Tannehill took over, okay? It was the end of Mariota's tenure. Mariota, go ride the pine. You're not the guy, 100%. And Ryan Tannehill comes into a two and four football team in 2019, reels off a, a, an incredible win streak where the Titans offense was shocked with the paddles that they have, that the EMTs have, comes to life. They make an incredible run. Derrick Henry becomes an absolute monster in the NFL playoffs. And, you know, I wouldn't say that Tannehill necessarily helped in that run. He helped by not turning the damn ball over, Justin. In those yes. playoff games, Ryan Tannehill doesn't turn the ball over. It lets the Rabel scheme kind of come to life, and they make it to the AFC title game, Justin. The Titans were up 17-7 to in that AFC title game until Patrick Mahomes uh, did Patrick Mahomes things. And as we saw with the Bills Chiefs divisional matchup, uh, wow. I don't think they will be denied again. Uh, so Justin, then Ryan Tannehill uh, leads a high flying offense, the best offense you've seen in the music city since they came here uh, in 1999. Yeah. I say here as if I live there, but since the <laughs> Titans came to Nashville in 1999, Tannehill leads the best offense they've had as a franchise. And you know, you didn't think the defense was good. You know, this whole, you know, the team scheme, the defense was terrible in 2020. Uh, yep. So you walk into that Baltimore playoff game, your first home playoff game since 2008, Justin. Uh, oh, well over a decade. And the, the defense, defense comes delivered. And plays a great yeah. game. They deliver and the Go offense figure. does not deliver. That is disheartening, especially when you saw the offensive season that they had in 2020. Okay. That's fine. Let's dust ourselves off, run it back. We have the core. We know what we're capable of. John Robinson pulls a complete magic trick, fixes this defense over one offseason to become a Super Bowl caliber defense. And Made okay, a trade all right. for Julio Jones. I mean, we're going all in. Julio Jones, what, what, all in. Super Bowl window is open. Yes. We just had a hiccup in the playoff game against Baltimore. But all continue. In. Yes. You're good. And okay, so Ryan Tanhill sputters this year. And you can blame it on injuries. The Titans didn't start all 22 of their starters, which is another layer of the onion that just stinks even more is that this team yeah. was fully healthy coming into the Cincinnati Bengals game. And Ryan Tannehill fluttered throughout the season. You know, he had bad turnover games, but you felt like at the end of the season, he was turning a corner. His last three games were seven touchdowns, zero interceptions. And that's exactly the formula for Ryan Tannehill uh, to take this team to a Super Bowl. And you come out and the defense pitches an absolute masterpiece, Justin. And, and seven yeah. or nine sacks, not even seven, <laughs> nine sacks of Joe Burrow. If you told me that we sacked Joe Burrow nine times, uh, it's like the Ferris Bueller clip, dude. You know, the principal like nine times. Nine times. Nine times. So nice if you record. told me, thank you. If you told me that the Titans sacked Joe Burrow nine times, I would have said the Titans won this game by 20 plus 20 yeah. plus Same. and Same. it's because of crucial errors and crucial moments of the game. Uh, talk about the first play of the game, automatic three points for the Cincinnati Bengals. And you're lucky it wasn't set. All right. Yeah. And, the, and the Titans defense continues to get the job done and it's waiting on Tannehill, waiting on Tannehill, waiting on Tannehill. And, you know, I, I really, Justin, looking back at the game and the game flow, I just, I, I can't help but blame maybe Todd Downing more oh, yeah. than Ryan Tannehill. He, he plays a big part in this equation, too, of this disaster. And and you think back to the Tannehill of 2019 and 2020 and how efficient and how good this offense was and how much of a well-oiled machine this offense was. You remove Arthur Smith, and I think Titans fans are missing Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator more than you think. Yes, Ryan Tannehill's the guy – slinging his arm back, letting go of the football into those inexcusable windows, frankly. And, uh, but, you know, the play call, Justin, the, the worst one for me 
because uh, we've seen Ryan Tannehill end the season on back-to-back game, playoff games, throwing an interception yes. on his final throw. There was yes. the interception of Baltimore, interception uh, against Cincinnati, and they were identical. It's him forcing the ball to a wide receiver three, Nick Westbrook Akini, who hadn't uh, seen a target, Khalid the entire- last year. Exactly. Yeah. And he's forcing it into an impossibly tight window, intercepted, Titan season is over. Okay. Dude, just just throw, just take a sack. Like you can't throw a pick. That's the only field thing. With Twenty seconds to go. What the are you only thing you couldn't to? do? Uh, okay, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm sorry. gonna encapsulate uh, my my rant here, Justin. I'm sorry for uh, going on. No, and this on, is great. But, this is a great summary. Yeah. So Todd Downing, just the inexcusable play call after the Deontay Foreman incredible run. Yes. Shout out to Deontay Foreman probably one of the better players in that football game. He got four carries to Derrick Henry's 20, which I don't think Derrick Henry looked uh, himself, but that's another layer of the onion we will get to, Justin. Uh, But Todd Downing's play call, it's first and goal from the nine-yard line after an incredible run by Deontay Foreman. It is loose. You're running the ball well. Uh, You got all the way down there. Derrick Henry got you a first down before that run, and you're running the football effectively. What does he do besides go to the bubble screen to Chester Rogers that has never worked. We have never seen that work, Justin. If we get one yard out of that play, it's a win. Like, wow, <laughs> we executed that play. And I don't know if you saw the NFL films where Mike Hilton, who was who was the secondary oh. player who made the play on that ball, says they're going to run that bubble screen again, and I'm going to be ready, and I'm going to pick it. And that's exactly what happened. That is embarrassing for Todd Downing. Ryan yeah. Tannehill can't make that throw. He can't see him streaking in front of his face yeah. and let go of the football. But it's yeah. on the play call because Tannehill's instructions for that play call is turn and throw, turn and throw. And yeah. even if it got to Chester Rogers, it would have been a two yard loss. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I totally agree. It, yeah. That that's on Todd Downing, but I want to, I want to lay more blame on Tannehill too. Like if you just take a still image, the screenshot of the formation right before the snap, you can see that that play isn't going to work. They have uh, uh, their corners are like up close to the line of scrimmage. You have uh, Mike Hilton creeping up as well. You've got to be able to read that, Ryan Tannehill. You've got to be able to see that and think, okay, this play's not going to work. I got to check out of this. I think they're playing soft uh, zone coverage or something uh, on AJ Brown on the other side of the field. Do, do the same play, but over there where the corner's playing yeah. off more. Like, yeah, dude, it's it's Downing and it's Tannehill. You've got to check out of that or check check into a running play. We just Deontay Foreman had maybe the best run of the season uh, the play right before that that was an electrifying run uh yeah and four carries I mean how do you not give him the ball more after that in terms of game flow you are absolutely right it's like Todd Downing doesn't really have a beat on the game flow and I was definitely going to bring up the Chester Rogers screen because that was also I think my biggest head scratching embarrassing play in terms of play calling and execution uh but a lot is also being made of the uh, third and one uh where we didn't convert we handed it to or i think we had a bootleg or something called uh, for Tannehill, and then we handed it off to henry on fourth and one and then turned the ball over on downs didn't try a qb sneak just uh kind of uninspired play calling there again at a crucial moment in the game we can't pick up one yard given two downs uh it's making me feel downing Man, I've, I've tried real hard to pull out a, a good pun there. I like but. Hey, but okay, my issue with the – I don't have an issue with the play calling on the third one, third and one, fourth and one, okay? I have an issue with the fact that they lined up in the shotgun, Derrick Henry on the right hip, third and one. I said at the venue I was watching this game, I said, this is a Tannehill read option keeper bigger than shit. And guess what? Bigger than shit it was. And they were ready for it. They were right there ready for it. And it's incredible how many times I can predict what the Titans do when they line up in their formation. I, I, if I can do that, Cincinnati Bengals sure as hell can, Todd. You yeah. have to mix it up. You have to – and, you know, I think that play call was more – I think it's the right play call. We've seen that work 10 times out of 10, Justin. And the one time it didn't work, it ended up being detrimental because then on fourth and one, yes, we need to run the QB sneak more. And, and teams across the NFL need to run the QB sneak more because it's 99 times out of 100 going to work. Uh, yeah. But, you know. If, and he's been very good at it. He's been yeah. he's a very good QB sneaker, too. It, all, it works. I can't even – I can't think of a time where a QB sneak had has not worked for Ryan Tannehill. Over the past three seasons, 
how did we not try it in, in that situation? I, I don't know. And I, I don't have an issue with the, the fourth and one play call because if you told me, oh, the Titans were in a third and one, fourth and one, and a crucial point in the game, Justin, that was the drive where the Titans usually put teams away. We have watched this team win like this over and over and over again in spite of themselves. And this was the mid-fourth quarter drive where they go and they take a seven-point lead and they clamp down and it's over and they win. Yep. Even, even how much they have to grind it out that was the drive that was going to do it. And the Bengals made the plays necessary, but I don't have an issue with the play calling Justin, because the Tannehill read option keeper works nine times out of 10. This was the one out of 10 that didn't work. And then if you don't give it to Derrick Henry on fourth and one, people are going to be screaming, burning down Nissan stadium saying you only needed a yard and you didn't, didn't give Derrick Henry the ball once. So I don't have an issue with the play call. It's just the execution was poor. Henry hesitated, didn't look himself, wasn't decisive. Would have rather seen Foreman in the game at that point, but yeah, man, dude, I, I you're just, right. It's tough. I, I'm just I'm just emotional and upset that it didn't work. But you're right. I mean, the play calls themselves in the in that situation, uh, you know, it, it could have been worse. But it, it, yeah, it was, it was about the execution there. Uh, yeah, the hesitation from Henry. I don't know. He he looked pretty good early on in the game, but it felt like as the game wore on he was, you were seeing more of that hesitation or losing half a step here and there. And I, I, I don't know if that's him being out of football shape because he missed the last half of the season. And so the game was wearing on him, or maybe he was, he had had, had his foot in the back of his mind and he was trying to be careful with that. Uh, but either way, yeah, I, I think Deontay Foreman was the clear, uh, clearly the better running back for us in that game and only giving him four carries again, Todd Downing game flow look at who's what's working for you and what's not who cares what the game plan was before the game started throw it out the window and in game coaching is is more important than than pre-game coaching in a lot of ways so just you just feel bad man you feel bad for these players for the defense especially you feel bad for Deontay Foreman he he had he's had a career year for us and man he, he made a name for himself and he might be starting for a team next year we should try to bring him back if we can uh, but man, you feel bad for Simmons and Landry who played their butts off all year and had career games. Uh, I think Simmons had three sacks. I mean, this, this would have been, this would have been the Jeffrey Simmons game had, had the mm-hmm. Titans won. I mean, he, he dominated this game. This was like uh, watching Albert Hainsworth in 2008 when he was clearly a top three defensive player in the NFL. And he took over games as a defensive tackle, which is crazy, but that's what we were seeing Jeffrey Simmons do. And it's so sad that he gave it his all in this performance only to come up uh, in a loss and the season has ended early. Uh, It just hurts. It hurts. You you feel bad for these players in the defense, Uh, man. And and the fans too, man. I mean, I've seen this happen before, before any of these current players were on this uh, Tennessee Titans team. So I've, I've been through this heartbreak myself and I'm not trying to compare a fan's heartbreak to what a player might be feeling since they're the ones in the game and playing for, playing and this is their lives and their profession and then when they come up short of course they're going to feel feel terrible and and uh, luckily for us fans we can distract ourselves and and ignore uh twitter and and all that and all that noise that's what i've been trying to do uh but i can't i'll walk onto twitter and then at the very top of the twitter feed it'll be a different titans player like shouting out the fans and saying what a great season we're uh, we're, we're gonna give it a, another go next year and i'm like ah oh, no it still hurts close close twitter um man yeah and, and and seeing people already starting to discuss the draft and what do we need to do and how do we feel about Tannehill and downing and these coaching staff and 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 i'm like i i'm still in pain i'm still in shock and and i i'm not ready i i don't i don't even care about the draft or what the offseason is gonna hold i'm just still trying to cope jake help me cope here Yeah, and I'll help you cope, Justin. Uh, When it comes to the fan aspect of this game, uh, what a gut punch. I mean, okay, so as a younger Titans fan, not calling you an old head, man, but uh, I didn't see the Coliseum in its heyday. I didn't experience those Titans. I didn't experience the McNair Titans. My first taste was uh, maybe 2008, and I guess the stadium was rocking then, but it was an immediate drop-off. You know, immediate drop off into 2009, 2010, and then you just uh, it, steady decline from there. So yeah. I didn't really know Nissan Stadium to be a raucous, full venue. 
I, I watch yeah. plenty of Sundays where that place is half full. The team sucks. And Nashville could really care less about having an NFL team, Justin. And it, and it, uh, it's just a terrible, terrible blow to the franchise that it seems like every time that the city finally buys into this team and they show up in mass, and this is, I, Nissan Stadium had a full upper deck for the first time that I can ever yeah. remember seeing it on TV. Yeah. And what happens uh, when you trot out a healthy squad, all 22 players, the city is bought in, the king is back, you fell flat. Uh. And you think that the people who fill that top bowl and get you to a raucous environment and bought in for this team, they're not going to come back, Justin. They're not. Yeah. They're not. Yeah. And I don't want to see any more, uh, you know, players or, or anyone or even other fans, you know, whining and complaining. Oh, Titans fans need to need to come out and show out and, and be loud and support their team. They've they've done that and bought in just like you said only to have their hearts completely broken their guts yeah. completely punched all the way through and, and coming out the backside they, just a hole in the gut and yeah it hurts it's it's a very sad lonely walk across the bridge uh back back to the parking garage and i and i've done that too many times jake and it's it it's it never gets any easier uh for for uh, from a franchise perspective just absolutely uh terrible and you're not going to have people bought in for next year justin i know you don't want to talk about next year but it's here now we're officially not, in yeah, the off season i'm not even excited about it <laughs> and titans fans are not going to be excited because the the truth of the matter is ryan Tannehill is going to be your quarterback uh, right. unless something insane and completely unforeseen happens uh ryan Tannehill is going to be your quarterback for the 2022 tennessee titans and, and he's shown us twice now that he he can't get it done in the playoffs. I mean, it's like the moment's too big for him and, or something. But, yeah, even if this team goes on to capture another number one seed next year, are, how excited are we going to be and hyped are we going to be uh, for, this, for uh, the home playoff game when we've seen now two years in a row the offense and a lot of it is Tannehill uh, craps the bed when, when yeah. the moment arrives. So yeah. it's, it's gonna, it's, this feeling is not going to feel – any better until we make another run in, in the playoffs, honestly, or get, get a home playoff. Just win, win a I playoff can't remember game. the last time. What'd you say? Just win a playoff game. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I, the last time we won a home playoff game, I think was uh, 2002 against the Steelers in overtime. I was at that game too. And yeah, that was an incredible atmosphere, amazing excitement. And, and we have not given the city of Nashville uh, a playoff win in their own stadium. And how long is that? 20 years. years, 20 years. Oh yeah. 2022. Good Lord. My math is way off. All those yeah. shots, Justin, you gotta so, put down the Brown bag. <laughs> hey, so, okay. For the record, this is just a visual gag. This is a, this is Snapple. I'm pouring. <laughs> so, oh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, you know, okay. I'm not, yeah, I'm not getting crazy with these double shots. I'm, I would be like eight shots <laughs> deep at this point which is ridiculous, but <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm not going to be excited <laughs> even if the state makes the playoffs again. Uh, and, and, and Tannehill is going to be the quarterback. He's got to show us that he can get it done when we ask him to. He didn't have to do much in the playoff run, like you said, a couple no. years ago. He he threw a nice deep shot to Khalif Raymond. Uh, I think he he, uh, he did throw a touchdown pass to Anthony Ferkser against the Patriots, which proved to be huge because mm -hmm. uh, there was very low scoring in that game. Uh, but yeah, since since then he's yeah he's he's not able to get it done in the playoffs for us, Jake. And this is our our Super Bowl window. We have a great team around us, but as long as your quarterback is average to good ish, uh, you're not going to win a Super Bowl. We'll see though with San Francisco and I was just about to say it, Justin Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo. Good I, I get that Titans fans aren't going to be excited, and I get that you're not going to be excited if Ryan Tannehill is your quarterback going into the playoffs. But here's the thing. It's not that Ryan Tannehill has to go out there and throw for 300 yards and four yeah. touchdowns. He doesn't have to do that. That's not the Titans game plan. All he has to do is not turn the ball over, Justin. That's it. Right. That's it. The Titans yeah. win by two touchdowns. If Ryan Tannehill doesn't turn the ball over in that game, Justin, the defense did their job and it's just crushing. It is crushing. Yeah. I can't think of any other word. And I, you know, I thought that this game was going to go down to a Randy Bullock revenge kick. I was all the way yeah. in. The Titans had hit the big play. 
I mean, we have to shout out the one good thing that Ryan Tannehill did and was throw an absolute dime into the bread basket of A.J. Brown for the oh, touchdown. Man. It was the one time I felt alive game the entire A.J. game. Brown. And uh, I I don't know, man. I was fully convinced that the Titans were going to drive down, kick a game-winning field goal, or miss it and go to overtime. But I liked their chances in overtime. And yeah, I did too. It's but brutal. you throw a pick at midfield with the only seconds. thing you couldn't do. That's a Brett Favre thing, dude. That's – yeah. That, that, that's a Brett Favre move right there. And, man, oh, good Lord. Yeah, Packers fans know what we're talking about. They know what we're talking about this year when they yeah. got upset, too, against the 49ers. So we, we kind yeah. of are on the same level. I, at least they've won a Super Bowl in, the, in their lives. Um, yeah. <laughs> but here's the reason for optimism for the 2022 squad, Justin. Uh, you're going to run it back with a lot of the guys you had this year, Okay. And you're watching Jimmy Garoppolo, who many people think is a very Ryan Tannehill-esque quarterback. You know, they win football games, but is he going to go do it? Uh, He made it to one Super Bowl, didn't win it. Uh, And the 49ers haven't really been sold on Jimmy G. They drafted Trey Lance, for Christ's sake. And you're watching him play in an NFC title game, in a game where people think that the 49ers are going to win. So it's possible to do it with Tannehill. It is. Is he the guy to go out there and go win you a Super Bowl? No, he just has to not make mistakes. And yeah. if Ryan Tannehill can put together three decent games, there's no reason this team can't go to the Super Bowl because your defense lights out and they're young and they're hungry and they're going to improve. Yeah. And maybe a second year under Todd Downing, I guess, could help. Some can, continuity. Uh, I don't want Hopefully it. they throw away a lot of pages in the playbook because I don't want I don't want Todd. It was the most Todd vanilla, uninspired offense, uh, especially coming off of 2022, where you saw the best Titans offense you've ever seen. Uh, you know, get rid of Corey Davis, insert Julio Jones, and you're like, all right, let's ride. And it was awful. It was and Julio, terrible. Julio came in and I thought played a pretty good game too. Uh, we were throwing him the ball and he looked good. He was getting open. He had some catches. He wasn't a, a huge difference maker, but uh, he, he provided a kind of a spark here and there. And it looked like he was poised to, you know, put together a few of the best games he's played as a Titan, you know, yeah. looking healthier than he has. And yeah, it just, you know, it comes down to those, those Tannehill mistakes for me, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. I'm, I'm trying not to lose sleep over it, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm not, you know, holding my breath for anything crazy to happen in the off season. And if nothing crazy happens in the off season, I'm frankly not going to be holding my breath for a, a Titan Super Bowl run be, just because no. of what we've seen the past two years. We, we have a, a playoff team that that's it, but we need a Super Bowl team. And with that, I think you have to have better uh, quarterback play and, and coaching, obviously. And, you know, Tannehill and Downing are, I, I'm down on both of them. Yeah. Uh, right As now, you so. should be. Yeah. I mean, I know, guys, this is this is a pretty negative episode. I'm feeling negative, still emotional seven days later. Uh, I, I feel like we, this is like the same kind of negative energy ranting had we made this right after the game. And it's still with me. It's still it's still pouring out. Um, but it would have been you know, I think it would have been worse right. right after the game. I, it yeah. could have been way worse. Uh, it Justin, it you're telling me, man, I cannot escape. The Cincinnati Bengals, because I live in Dayton, Ohio, which is uh, 45 minutes north of Cincinnati. And every time I leave my house, there's somebody in Bengals gear. There is sports talk radio talking about how fun this Bengals team is and how the Titans blew it and all this stuff. And they're a cocky bunch, man. I tell you what, these Bengals fans that are crawling out of the woodwork are a cocky <laughs> bunch, dude. They think they're going to go to KC and, and win. And, they, and they're convinced. And, you know, more power to them. I, I feel like the Titans fan base was similar. You know, it's a small market team that doesn't get a lot of exposure, makes an unexpected run. Why not be yeah. confident? I get it. But when I'm standing in line at like Dick's Sporting Goods and the two guys in front of me are talking about the Titans Bengals game, I just can't uh, go anywhere and not think about the game. It's, it's, oh gosh. it's been tough. They better be thanking their lucky stars that Tannehill threw them the ball three times. That's that's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, I, dude, I, I know I sound horribly salty right now, uh, but they they you know they came to Nashville and got the W. I'm not trying to say they didn't earn it themselves, but man, oh man, the Titans made were making mistakes in this game, and man, that that sucks. I mean, yeah, I, I 
I, I couldn't be you right now. I would, I would be holed up in my home because I would hate to go out and just be seeing Bengals gear and conversations and chatter here and there about, oh, the, what a great win that was. And yeah, let's go to Kansas City and get a win. And they beat this Bengals or they beat the Chiefs. Uh, what was it? Second to last game of the season, yeah. which helped the Titans get the number one seed. And then they come to Nashville and beat us. That's not how it's supposed to happen, Jake. No, it's not. Uh, Shame on us for doing the Who Day chant weeks, week 17 at Nissan Stadium. Maybe we put that upon ourselves. Oh gosh, but we had the yeah. whole section cheering for uh, the Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Chiefs in that game because it we gave it. the Titans yeah. the one seed. Yeah, we were at that Dolphins game and we were tracking the, what the Bengals were doing. Unbelievable. It's, it's now come full circle to bite us in the butt. Uh, man, and I, have, I have really had no reason to dislike the Bengals team. I, you know, I like Joey Burrow and – you know, he's a, the young gunslinging quarterback and he's great. And he seems like a really great guy and they have an exciting offense and a trio of receivers. And, you know, they're a, a franchise like the Titans that are smaller market and hasn't had the Super Bowl success. Um, but now because they beat us and upset us, I'm not going to like them anymore. <laughs> I mean, you know, if they go into the, the rivalry, Super Bowl, is I would rather them win the Super Bowl than the Chiefs, maybe the Rams. I don't, I don't want any of these teams to win the Super Bowl. Maybe the 49ers. I, you know, they're, 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 they're okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just, yeah. Now, now I'm just mad at the Bengals, and now I will never forgive them ever for this, for this uh, loss that they gave us. So, sorry, Cincinnati. I, you're now, now you are on my no-visit city list Damn, forever. That's tough. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, that's overreaction, of course. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it sucks. And I, Justin, I like the Bengals fine before this, but now, now not so yeah. much. That's fair. That's fair. And you know, it's love hate. You know, I I would like to see them go to Kansas City and win, but man, it's going to get really annoying in the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I tell you what. So uh, I, uh, it's about perspective in times like these, Justin. It's really about uh, taking a look at the journey you've been on as a Titans fan, and you have to think about the time that the Titans won five games in two seasons, went three and 13, two and 14. And think about how little fun you had cheering on the Titans. I mean, I guess it was less stressful because you already knew they were going to lose. You didn't put a lot of emotional weight into it, but you still won 12 games. Great. You still won the AFC South. Also great. We could have, you know, been a one and done. It's just, It's just because the stakes are so high now because the team is actually playing for something. It hurts that much worse. You know, if the Titans did squeak out this game and then got blown out in the AFC title game, how would we feel the exact same, you know, and we just got it out of the way a week earlier. I know that's kind of a weird loser talk perspective, but we're losers, Justin. (laughs) The Tennessee (laughs) Titans are losers. And that's just just what we have to uh, accept and cope with. And, this team is going to run it back next year. They should be the favorites in the AFC South. I don't see why not. And you just go try and do it again. Keep knocking at the door. I have faith in Amy Adams Strunk and John Robinson and Mike Vrabel to continue keeping this team at a high level. They just got to win some playoff games. They just have, that's, that's all it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I appreciate your optimistic outlook there. And, uh, it's just, yeah, it's just going to be a long road, long off season for me. This might be the last video we make for a while. <laughs> I'm just kind of avoiding football. I haven't, I, I don't even know if I'm going to watch. I'll probably end up watching these games. Yeah, come on. It, come it's on. Still in you the back enjoy of football. My, yeah, it's just in the back of my mind. It's like the Titans sh- should be in this game. I should be at Nissan Stadium right now yep. watching the Titans play the Chiefs. Uh, and I think I liked her chances against the Chiefs too. Uh, they, you know. Everyone's talking about how epic that game was against the Bills, and it was. But where's the defense, man? I, I like our defense's chance against uh, Patrick Mahomes and that offense. We have held them to three points already in the regular season this year. But you know, that's that's fantasy talk. That's wishful thinking. That will never happen or never come true because we did not get it done against Cincinnati here. Um, so best of luck to them for the rest of the playoffs. Mm, yeah. Do you want to? Uh, Anything else you want to say about this game, or uh, we can we can make our little picks here for the, that's all. I, I get, yeah, we can wrap it up with just quickly picking the conference title games, Justin. Okay, 
Uh, so Sunday, 2 p.m. is the Cincinnati Bengals at Kansas City. Oh, it hurts <laughs> to say that. <laughs> okay. It um, should be the Kansas City at Tennessee. Yeah, Whatever. yeah, but it's not happening. Um, man, I don't know. I it's going to be tough. It's, both of these games are going to be tough for me to pick, but I think I think the Chiefs are going to get it done at home. I honestly do. They're, they're going to be at Arrowhead Stadium this time around. Um, their offense is playing much, much better. Uh, they, they are peaking, and it's like, yeah, they, they're still, they still have those lulls sometimes, it feels like, but then they can turn it on and put up points instantly. Like, dude, just look at the last two minutes of that game last week against the Bills. Like, that was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This this kind of screams um, kind of the Titans uh, run two years ago, where we won two games. I know mm-hmm. the win the Raiders wasn't an upset because uh, they were at home and they were a better team than the Raiders. But then they go on to def- take down the one seed, and then they have to go to Arrowhead. And I think I think they just kind of run out of gas here. That that's that's my prediction. Uh, probably going to be a fairly high scoring game, uh, but I'll, I'll take the Chiefs here, Jake. What about you? I am also going to take the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Justin, just because I, I with Cincinnati's O line, Joe Burrow got sacked nine times, Justin, nine times, and yeah. it's ridiculous. If he gets sacked nine times against any other football team in the NFL, the Bengals lose that game. But uh, <laughs> yeah. luckily enough, it came against the Tennessee Titans. Uh, so I, I, I just I don't trust this Bengals squad fully in the two playoff games we've watched. It took them all 60 minutes to beat the Las Vegas Raiders, came down to Derek Carr throwing an interception. And then you look to the next week, it takes all 60 minutes to go beat the Tennessee Titans, who was the worst one seed ever, and it came down to Ryan Tannehill throwing you an interception in the waning moments of the game for the Bengals to win that game. And and so if you can barely squeak by the Raiders and the Titans – you think you're going to go to Arrowhead and put it up on the Chiefs who are absolutely on a roll right now? Yeah, right, dude. Yeah, right. Like, and, and Bengals fans believe that they're going to do it. So, I'm okay. All right. Go ahead, Bengals fans. Be confident. But I just, especially after watching that Kansas City Buffalo game, uh, the Chiefs are playing like a team that's not going to be denied. And uh, I expect that to yeah. continue, especially uh, at their home stadium of Arrowhead. I'm going to take the Chiefs. All right. We both got the Chiefs here. Um, man, we got a NFC West showdown for uh, the NFC Championship game. San Francisco 49ers at the Los Angeles Los Angeles Rams. I almost said Las Vegas. Uh, how interesting, Jake. If the Rams win this game, they have like back-to-back home games with the other one being the Super Bowl since it's uh, Super Bowl is played in L.A. this year. Um, but interestingly enough, Jake, the 49ers swept this Rams team. Um, and also big props to the Rams. I was very happy to see them take down the defending champion, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, but man, this should be a very interesting game. The 49ers are a very interesting team. Uh, Debo Samuel, man, it's just more and more impressive. Every single time I watch the, the Niners, which is not a lot, but it's been more and more because this year they're good. And we saw them in Nashville uh, in December. And Debo Samuel is, is just something else, dude. And I don't know exactly what makes him so good. He doesn't look to be like the fastest receiver or or anything, but he just he's so smooth and how he 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 runs the football and he's so dominant and dynamic. Uh, so it's gonna come down to I mean, they he's he's their X factor. They've got to get him going, but man, this Rams defense is no joke. He's gonna have to get it done against Jalen Ramsey. How is Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo going to do with a pass rush like Von Miller and Aaron Donald in his face? Um, man, and, you know, you, we were talking about Jimmy Garoppolo earlier, and can, can the 49ers get it done with Jimmy Garoppolo? Or in kind of paralleling that with uh, the Titans, can we get it done with Tannehill? I'm predicting uh, Jimmy Garoppolo either this game or if they happen to win this game, He'll do it in the Super Bowl. I think Garoppolo is going to throw that terrible brack breaking interception, turn the ball over a couple times because I think that's kind of the quarterback, the kind of quarterback he is. And just like Tannehill, the key for the 49ers quarterback is to not turn the ball over. You cannot give the ball away when you get this far into the playoffs against a very, very talented Rams squad. I mean, this is 
if the Rams win it, this will be the bought and paid for championship. I mean, they mm-hmm. have a symbol, just like an elite team selling out the future to win now. Anyway, having said all that, I am predicting Jimmy G to make a few mistakes here, and I think that will be their undoing. I got the Rams winning this one, uh, setting up a Chiefs versus Rams Super Bowl, which would be pretty exciting to see, yep. honestly. But uh, yeah, let, I got? like it. Okay, Justin, this might be my fanhood talking, and I'm really glad you brought up the parallel universe of the Niners pretty much being the NFC's Titans in a way. I mean, the Titans haven't seen the success of the San Francisco 49ers over the past few years, granted, but like in just terms of play style and how the team is built, uh, very, Mm -hmm. very similar to the Tennessee Titans. And again, their game plan is Jimmy G, go out there and don't turn the ball over, manage the game, and we'll get this done with defense and a running game and make a clutch throw on third and seven and we'll go win the game. And so for my fanhood and to believe that the 2022 Tennessee Titans can make the Super Bowl ah. with a Ryan Tannehill, Jimmy Garoppolo esque quarterback. I'm going to take the 49ers to get it done and sweep cool. the Rams uh, right. in three games, Justin. Uh, right. And I also just don't want to see the storyline again that, oh, the team's playing in their home stadium in the Super Bowl. It's kind of played out, yeah. happened once. Now I don't really care. So, uh, <laughs> I got the Niners uh, in, a, in a ground and pound attack. And you know what they say, Justin? You cannot buy Super Bowls. So mm-hmm. uh, no bought and paid for championships here. You got to go out and, and get them. I feel good for uh, Matthew Stafford, though. Obviously, he's put in so mm-hmm. much work and good football for the Detroit Lions. But playing for a bad franchise like Detroit, he never has seen any real success, obviously, in the playoffs, especially. Uh, and to see him in a conference championship game, you know, hats off to him doing good things there. Uh, but yeah, even though I'm picking the Rams, I got to say, I think I would like to see the 49ers win the Super Bowl out of all four of these teams because mm-hmm. uh, they are kind of that underdog. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're likable. And, you know, Debo Samuel might be as has really emerged as I think one of my favorite non-Titan football players. He, he is so much fun to watch. Uh, so he really, you know, turns the needle for me to kind of root for San Francisco, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, so, yeah, so you got 49ers doing the very difficult thing of beating the same team three times in one season. They got an opportunity to do that, uh, but I got the Rams, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, how, how are you guys feeling about this conference championship game? Uh, either of them? Uh, yeah, and what do, you get, what, do, what do you got to say about the Titans? Leave your comments below if you made it through this whole video of us very sad. And rambling about our sadness then uh we thank you very much for that uh but leave us a comment and we appreciate you sticking around uh jake you got anything else to say absolutely i think that's going to do it for us justin uh brighter days ahead this too shall pass and i guarantee you by next september uh, we'll be ready to watch the titans again yeah yeah you're right who am i kidding i'm gonna be so high <laughs> super bowl is on the menu we're looking good yeah. like we score that first John touchdown in the preseason i'm like yeah. i think this is our year yeah <laughs> classic um, all right yeah. that's well, we'll gonna do it. yeah well we don't know when we haven't really discussed what the future holds for titans 2 we may make a super bowl you know video and talk about the super bowl game whoever whoever comes out of these two games here uh so stay tuned for that but uh, other than that yeah i, I need to take a break on, on the titans and just thinking about our future in the off season. It, it'll it be is, better for my health, trust me. It is locker clean out day for Titans too, Justin. I yeah. tell you that much. Uh, like, <laughs> comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Tighten up. Times Still are tight. tough now, but uh, you know what they say. There's always next year. Yeah. Tighten up and peace yeah. out. <laughs> peace out.